In this discussion, I'd like to talk about Neville's method, which we discussed in an in-class meeting. To summarize, suppose that you had polynomial P, which interpolated a function F at Xi through Xk, I through K being consecutive indexes. And you also had a polynomial Q that interpolated at the same number of indexes, but all of the indexes are bumped up by one. So instead of going from Xi to Xk, you'll go from Xi plus one to Xk plus one. What we convinced ourselves of, if you construct the R polynomial in this way, R will interpolate function F at Xi through Xk and also at Xk plus one. So R will interpolate at one more data point than either P or Q did separately. The way I remember how to write this down is, Q is the polynomial that has the bigger indexes on it. You multiply that by X minus the smallest index out of the collection that you're looking at, minus, you have to write the other polynomial, the one that interpolates at the smaller index values, times X minus XK plus one. On the bottom of the fraction, you take the largest indexed X in the collection that you're looking at at the moment and subtract away the smallest indexed X. What I'm going to do today is to literally find all of these polynomials. As we'll see, there'll be a way around it so that we don't actually have to go to all of this trouble. But initially, I want to do it this way so that you can see exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to have three data points. X zero is one. The corresponding function value to go with it is five. That would be F of X zero or F bracket X zero in our new notation. X one will be five. The corresponding function value is 17. X two is going to be six with corresponding function value 50. And I'm going to calculate three things. I'm going to calculate A, B, and C. A is going to be an interpolating polynomial that interpolates at X zero and X one. B will interpolate the function at X one and X two. And then once we know that, we'll be able to use our R formula again to find out what C is. C will interpolate the data at X zero, X one, and X two. I switched to a fine point Sharpie so that things would fit on the page. Hopefully it's still readable though. A is going to be the interpolating polynomial based only on X zero and X one. If you write down the R formula using this information, I'm going to take the lower degree polynomial, the constant polynomial, F bracket X one, and multiply it by X minus the smaller of the two indexes, zero or one, minus X minus X one times F bracket, the smaller index. Since I only have one index here, that'll be X zero. If you write down the numbers from the data set, you find out that this should be X minus one times 17, minus X minus five times five, divided by five minus one. And when the work has been done, you end up with three X plus two. This is the polynomial of degree one or less that interpolates my data at X zero and X one. Similarly, B is going to interpolate the data at X one and X two. If you write down the information from the problem, you get this complicated looking thing. 
f bracket x2 though is just the function value at x2 and f bracket x1 is the function value at x1. So we know those numbers as well. And after doing the algebra and simplifying it, we get 33 times x minus 148. So if we write down our table, we write down the things that we know, we have the x values, we have the corresponding function values, which by the way are polynomials of degree zero that interpolate the function at single points. What we've done is we combined this piece of information with this one to find three x plus two to be the polynomial of degree one or less that interpolates at x zero and x one. Using our R formula, again, we found the interpolating polynomial that interpolates at x1 and x2 is 33x minus 148. We don't know C yet. Once we do, we'll be done. 3x plus 2 interpolates the function at x0 and x1. 33x minus 148 interpolates at x1 and x2. If I think about the collection of all of these x's that I'm looking at, the smallest indexed one is x0 and the biggest indexed is x2. That's going to be the two numbers on the bottom of my fraction that I subtract in order to carry out Neville's method. So this time, x minus the smallest indexed x in the current collection, x minus x, zero, x minus one, times the polynomial that interpolates at the bigger set of indexes, that would be b, minus x minus the biggest indexed x in our collection, times the polynomial that interpolates at the smaller two, indexes. If you put all the numbers in and grind through the arithmetic, when all is said and done, the polynomial that you get is 6x squared minus 33x plus 32. This allegedly is my interpolating polynomial for points x0, x1, and x2. My table if I wanted to write it down completely, now looks like this. So our interpolating polynomial is 6x squared minus 33x plus 32. Those who are interested can check and make sure that that's right. If you take x equal one and evaluate this polynomial, you end up with five. If you evaluate this polynomial, at x1, which is 5, you get 17. And if you evaluate the polynomial at x2, which is 6, you get 50. This is the unique polynomial of degree no more than 2 that interpolates our data at our three data points. In principle, you could use Neville's method to write down the interpolating polynomial for any suitable data set, but I think it's pretty obvious that doing all of the algebra becomes very tedious very quickly. It would be better if there were a way to get the results of Neville without actually having to do it. We're going to approach this in two steps. One, I'm going to think of having some specific x value that I want to evaluate the interpolating polynomial at. We will feed that particular x number through the Neville process and get p of x, where p is the interpolating polynomial. It's going to turn out that we can do even better than that. That is what's going to lead us into the divided difference method, the Newton divided difference method. So we will have at least one more little video about Neville 
and possibly two, or I may go on and jump straight to the Newton form. I hope this is easy to understand and that everyone's having a good day. I'll talk to you soon.